tonight from M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland. It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens taking on Kenny Pickett and the Pittsburgh Steelers. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to historic Baltimore, Maryland and m and Bank Stadium. Coming up, we've got a good matchup on tap between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Baltimore Ravens. And hi again, everybody. A long partner Charles Davis I'm Brandon Gordon and Charles when you and I were going through our final run throughs at breakfast we kept thinking tonight we're going to get to see a couple of very good passing offenses and we're talking about both sides having multiple receivers that can have an impact on this game it's not just one guy that's going to make all the plays if you take him away maybe number two number three they make the big plays that impact who wins the game so out come the Steelers now for their first drive. And a glance here at their quarterback standing six foot three. And when you watch Kenny Pickett play, you see a young man who got better every season in college and really blossomed in his final campaign, took his game to a new level and made him a first round pick in the NFL. He's the type of kid who can beat you with his mind, beat you with his arm, and occasionally with his legs. A tough, skilled performer. Kenny Pickett. He's got some moxie to him. And they'll get to him quickly here as he'll get a yard, just a yard to the 22. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. They run again with Harris. And not much doing there. Maybe a yard up to the 23. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. They'll wind up losing three here on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. It looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackled him for a loss. On fourth down, here's Presley Harvin on to punt. James Prochet deep for Baltimore. Take it at the 37. A solid punt, but also a nice return there of 14 yards. And the Ravens set up well to begin their drive as it'll begin in enemy territory already. A number eight, Lamar Jackson, trotting onto the field at quarterback, ready to lead this Ravens offense. Early part of his career, defense has really had to focus on his running ability, and they still do. But now, he's turned himself into a true dual-threat quarterback. When he plants his cleats in the ground and turns it loose, Good things happen downfield. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Jackson now. And that's going to be caught. It's James Prochet. Now he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. A big one there for the Ravens. It goes for 18. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. It doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just I, They move, and they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary, and I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary target. Found a secondary guy who sprang open probably because of his movement out of the pocket. 
I'm looking at this one with my defensive eyeglasses on because you remember the old days when a tight end saw a linebacker covering him and thought he had a mismatch? But the way they can run nowadays, not necessarily so. They gave it a shot downfield. That one incomplete. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. Here's Jackson to throw. Looking left side, Andrews with it complete. And they're going to get this down to about the 17-yard line here. I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Rolling to his left. Toward the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will wind up incomplete. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. To throw again is Jackson. A quick throw knocked away. It's incomplete. That was not a real confident throw right there, and he's just two of seven to start the game. Now he's going to have to find a groove with a big third down coming up. Let's see if his confidence can increase. Now on third down, that pass knocked down in the backfield and incomplete. Oh, that's going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. They're not going to get it. They try to move the chains with a surprise, but it's a turnover on downs. They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. And this Steeler defense able to come up with a stop. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Pick it. Back to throw. His throw incomplete. They certainly thought he had an open book beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Throwing on third down. Here's Pickett. He gets it complete to Harris. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just try and find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. They run the play fake. Here's Pickett. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And it's picked up by the Ravens. So they've got the football, and they'll start right on the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. A defensive-minded coach loves to bring the heat, brought the heat there, and it worked out. And nowadays, all those defensive-minded coaches, for them, it's all about getting the football. I went into one facility, and as soon as you walked into the defensive room, there was a football, like on a spring, and each guy that walks in that plays has to act like he's knocking the ball free. They want those instincts created. They want them to think about that all the time, and that's what they try to preach. That is caught. It's Bateman for a Raven touchdown. Rashad Bateman, a 20-yard touchdown. And the Ravens take the early turnover and convert it into an opening touchdown. But what a quick turnaround there. They get the football. Next play, boom, touchdown. I've been in a situation before where a turnover occurs. If you're over on the bench with your defensive mate and you talk about what to do on your next series, and all of a sudden you hear sudden change, you've got to get out on the field and defend right away. Not everyone is mentally prepared to go. Is that what is yelled on the sidelines a lot of times? That, among other things. <laughs> Maybe some words we can't share here. Yeah, we'll, we'll just keep this with PG. FCC violation. No doubt. 
Tucker with the extra point. And that makes the score 7-0. A nice, tidy little drive there, getting the ball in excellent field position and only one play to score it. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Fielded right around the eight. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Pick it to throw on first down. He'll get this to his tight end. That's Pat Fryermuth. Four yards there, and that's going to bring up second down. Second and six at the 30-yard line. Harris running straight ahead. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big time play? They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Third and two, pick it. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. On his Presley Harbin now as he'll send this one away. Crochet on the return. So a good punt, but a solid 12-yard return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. <laughs> to throw is Jackson. Now a clash of bodies here and it's intercepted. The safety Terrell Edmonds picks it. And the Steelers are going to take possession of the football. Well, certainly not his best throw that time and not a good time to make it, Charles, when they were a nickel with five defensive backs on the field. And that's exactly why you have those five DBs out there. You want extra speed on the field, guys who have ball skills and understand what the passing game can do and gives them a chance to react and make a play on the football, and they take one of those away. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Again, it's Harris on second down. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. And Harris is not going to get there. Great work defensively to stop him short. Remember, that was less than a yard. That was not a full yard. That defense, they were having none of it. Yeah, the surge the offensive line was seeking actually occurred on the other side of the ball. They reestablished the line of scrimmage and stuffed them. Hey, 
Now Pickett on fourth down. It fights him off. And he's brought down. Can't do anything with the football. It's a sack and a turnover on downs. They wanted to throw for it. A surprise does not work on fourth and goal from the one. And the Ravens come up big down at their own goal line. A chance to get some momentum here in the second quarter, getting their first trip into the red zone, but unable to get it across. And if I'm the head coach, sure, you feel some disappointment, maybe a little bit of deflation there because you didn't get it in, but I'm going straight to rah-rah mode. All right, guys, we didn't get it this time. That's only the second quarter. We'll be back. Let's get it later on. I want to keep this team up. I don't want them to feel like they've let everyone down. Positive. Got to be positive in this situation. It's too early to think that you don't have a chance to win this game. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. He's got his man. It's Andrews. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And it'll be second down. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender. But the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. Off the play fake to Dobbins. Here's Jackson. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that's caught inside the 35. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Devin Duvernay, 87 yards. And the Ravens are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Charles, there aren't really any slow receivers, but there's fast and then really fast. He's really fast, and he showed off the afterburners there. And that he is because when he took off, I was thinking there's no chance that he can actually reach him with that pass. Yet he did, and he's still sprinting. And just think about what that does for everyone else on his team because his ability to stretch a field opens things up for the rest of the receivers on the team. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. The Steelers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled, haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. Let's we'll see if they can do better here on this drive. On first and ten, it's Pickett. Steps away to his left. And that's off the mark, incomplete. Well, they certainly did a nice job improvising there, extending the play, hoping someone would come open downfield, but they never did. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. Dancing to his left. And the catch made by Johnson. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. And the Steelers on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and eight. Here's Pickett. Setting up the screen, Harris. And a good job defensively. They stop him short of the first at the 32. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. The key to any screen play is open the deception. And that means everyone on the offensive side of the ball. But someone gave it up because that one wasn't very well concealed. And the defense able to rally to him and hold him for just a short game. Here's Presley Harvin now. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Oh, the return is Prochet. It's a 42-yard punt, but eight on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. The offense for the Ravens returns to the field. It's been a good first half so far. They're up 14 to nothing. Points here, they could really put them in command before intermission. Yeah, and it's all well and good what they're seeing and how they're feeling right now. 
But this is the NFL. How many times have we watched 14 and nothing leads evaporate and quickly? Mm. So how, do we, how have we seen them combat it? Continue to run your offense, but don't back off at all. Don't start looking at the clock. Don't start thinking about, hey, just take care of the football. Keep attacking. Usually the best way to maintain control. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Jackson's throw complete there to Bateman. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. Two minutes to play, first half. It's 14 to nothing. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. From the 31, Jackson. Open there. I think that's a big pickup for a first down, because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down. Executed it to perfection. Tried to get it that time to James Crochet. And that'll bring up second down. Jackson from the shotgun. That's taken in by Duvernay. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 15-yard line. Give them 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And in for the Ravens, touchdown! J.K. Dobbins, a 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Ravens take a three-touchdown lead. Boy, so if you are scoring at home, Charles, and God bless you if you are, but that's now three drives and three touchdowns. So in a baseball game, wouldn't that wreak havoc on your scorecard? Yes. I mean, with all the action that's happening now, how they got here. Oh, and now they're going to fake it. It's a wobbler, and it's intercepted. And he takes it all the way back. It's a pick two, if you will, as that play backfires in a big way. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. From the 10. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. The Steelers taking over now late in this first half as they take over with exactly one minute to go here before intermission. the air on first down with Pickett. Pass complete. George Pickens with it. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Pickett's throw complete there to Johnson. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. To throw again on second down. Pick it. Again, it's Johnson. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 37. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. First and 10 here. You know, if they could just get three out of this, there's something about narrowing it to a two-score game at half that makes it feel like much. That's into a crowd and intercepted. Picked off by Roquan Smith. And he 
he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he will bring this back. It's a pick six and a Raven touchdown. And that pick six, Charles, that moves it up now to a three touchdown advantage. A great individual defensive effort there to continue what has been a very lopsided first half. And I better buckle in my seatbelt, right? Because you know, as a former DB, when I see a pick six, I'm up and jumping up and down watching it. Yeah, I'm supposed to be neutral, but those kind of plays, they excite me every time. They are in absolute control in this one. Nice play there. Oh, and now they're going to fake it. And he is not going to get in there. He stops short of the goal line, and the lead is going to stay right where it is. I know they're not asking me, but I'll give you my opinion anyway. I think it's time to erase that play from the call sheet. I guess they figure with the big lead they can experiment a little bit. But all in all, just go ahead and put that play on ice. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. So we've come to halftime after a very one-sided beginning to this one. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. This one is maybe not exactly in the bag yet, but there is definitely a big mountain to climb in this third quarter. The teams are already back out there. So let's not waste any time as we'll turn it back over to Brandon God. All right, coach. Thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Boswell on now to kick this one away. He'll going to sit on this one and it'll come out to the 25. This offense returns to the field led by Devin Duvernay, a wide receiver. Good day for him so far here in the third quarter. He's hit pay dirt once, over 100 yards, but hey, it's the third quarter. He's thinking, I want more, right? He wants more, and it just increases the confidence of his team because every play he makes, that means his quarterback is really feeling good about throwing the football. Probably feels like he can't throw an incomplete pass when he throws it to him right now. Yeah, he's looked really, really sharp. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. Throwing again on second and 10. Jackson. And this one is incomplete. Well, no one likes to see that drop, but I'll guarantee it's not going to stop his quarterback from going back to him anytime he has open space. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Here's Jackson being chased out left. And almost, but not quite, needed 10. He got nine, fourth down. That looked great when he first took off because in my mind, there was room to run and he had the marker in his sight. But I certainly didn't expect him to close so quickly and neither did he. They got to him just in time and now that forced him to make a decision with his fourth down call. send their punter out now and the way this offense has moved the ball he hasn't been needed till here in the third oh it's a wobbler here fair catch taken just inside the 40 yard line well, pretty woeful there just 23 yards on the punt and the Steelers will go on offense here first and ten 
Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. So good field position for the Steelers as they come up first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Pick it now on first down. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long game or make people miss downfield. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. That's the NFL vet Calais Campbell coming in and dragging him down. So one quick, easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive rain. But now it's first and goal. And then you have success throwing the football. The old cliche becomes true. The playbook opens up wide. And these screen passes, they become even more difficult to stop. And they've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. Play action. Now Jackson sliding out of the pocket. Got a man. It's caught for a Ravens touchdown. Isaiah Likely, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Ravens continue to run up the score. They lead it big here in the fourth. Well, when coaches come into a game preaching total team effort, CD, I think this is the type of ball game that they're dreaming of. It was pretty apparent early on that they were clicking in all three phases. It's, it's been fun to watch. Yeah, sometimes in the NFL, you end up with matchups like we've been watching here. And when you go back to the early drives, you can just see that one squad is on a different level in this game. Safe to say, we have been disappointed in watching their execution throughout this contest. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Sims going to go ahead and hold on to this one, and they'll start at the 25. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. Well, it's been a struggle so far for this offense, Charles. It's not only that they haven't been able to put the points up, but really stringing yards together has been a real issue for them in this one. I'm so glad you brought up the yardage because I was thinking to myself, we've seen a lot of NFL games, and we've seen our share of lopsided contests, but in almost all of them... It's intercepted. They got Pickett for the third time in this game. Kyle Hamilton picks it, and the Ravens are going to take possession of the football. Over this advantage, this defense knew that passes were coming, and they stayed in position, Charles, and picked one off here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, what a way to cap things off, huh? Because I think this is part of the game within the game. They see the scoreboard, they see what they can accomplish, and they went for it. After the interception, here's Jackson. Touchdown! Lamar Jackson hooking up with Mike Andrews. And the Ravens take the forced turnover on defense and convert it into six points. Even though they've got this big advantage, Charles, they are not taking their foot off the gas pedal right now. Well, I think what we're seeing is the result of all their great preparation and great practice time during the week. And even though it seems like this is a great chance to pull people back and maybe, you know, not try and score a few more times, they don't want to do that. I think they're enjoying what they're seeing, the collective effort, and they want to play it all the way out. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. now for the extra point.
And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. Well, they got the ball in great field position. One play later, boom, end zone. Kick it away following the touchdown. And Sims says, let's bring it out to the 25. The Steeler offense set to regain possession. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers you would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, OK, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. Tyus Bowser, his second sack of the night. And you hate to say it with a rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, looked a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has. But in his defense, he hasn't had a lot of time to throw the football. You like the way I said that? In his defense. In his defense. I got it. You yeah. see what I did there? Yeah. He needs better protection, that's for sure. Pickett and the Steelers in need of a big play here. Third and long after the sack. Back to throw. That'll be caught. It's Steven Sims. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. It'll be a gain of 12, but it will also lead to fourth down. Steelers send out their punter now as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. That's pulled in at the 32. A great return there of 22 yards. And the Ravens set up well to begin their drive as it'll begin in enemy territory already. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And they've got to be feeling very comfortable and confident here with this lead in the football here in the fourth quarter, Charles. And I don't think that they need to score again, but it seems like this offense is just getting better as the game goes on. They've scored on their last two drives. Certainly feels like a chance for them to continue to have some fun out there, doesn't it? Game's already decided, as you noted. So they can continue to play loose, break out some other concepts, maybe run a few trick plays, get other people involved. Heck, even go deep on one of these first snaps just because they can. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. Partner in the sportsmanship handbook. There's something to be said for calling the dogs off in a blowout. But these defenders, they also know this is the NFL, and it's their job to stop them, whether they're in the game or they're down by a handful of touchdowns. And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. Play action. It's Jackson. And this will be incomplete. Both players with a shot at it that time, but neither coming away with it. 
Finally, a good play there defensively on the deep ball. The secondary has had its struggles this entire game. Offensively, they've had their way with them. And they're going to fake it. He wants to throw it here. And this one will not work out. It is incomplete. It would have been a long field goal. The fake doesn't work out. And this Steeler defense able to come up with a stop. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. But we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And, partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And they're going to get this down near the 35-yard line. It hasn't been the cleanest game for him, but there was a sign of improvement as he looks towards the next one. Nice bit of scrambling to move the sticks, and even more importantly, he didn't risk adding another interception to his ledger. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. First and 10, here's Pickett. That's caught by the 6'8 tight end, Zach Gentry. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Throwing again on second down. Pickett, it's brought in by Harris. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. Pickett will look to throw it here. It's Najee Harris now on back-to-back -back plays with a catch. And they're going to be set up now with a ball at the 13-yard line. Looking to throw again on second down. Pickett to the goal line, but it's incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. And he will not be able to hang on to the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Boswell's kick is good, and they'll get back three, but this remains a large deficit. Well, in the grand scheme of things, those three points likely not going to matter much, but I guess they get a little closer, a little more respectability. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been outplayed all game long, but like my mom used to tell me all the time before I went out, dress up a little bit, son. Make yourself respectable. <laughs> and that's what they're doing here. They're just dressing up the final score. And he'll be brought down at the 28-yard line, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more. The Ravens' offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. Now they are really in the driver's seat here, enjoying this lead late in the fourth quarter. The defense does have all three timeouts, but at this point, doesn't look like it's going to matter much. And despite the late lead, Jackson to throw. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Off the play fake, here's Jackson. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Terrell Edmonds comes flying in from safety for the sack. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. Now after that sack, it's third and long for Jackson and the Ravens. 
Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, at this juncture, CD, you normally see teams pack in the passing game. They've got the huge lead. Not them, though. They're still taking their shots. I remember reading in past history, there was a college football coach in the Hall of Fame whose nickname was Close the Gates of Mercy. Now, he wasn't really big on that. He was big on going ahead and scoring. He's kind of reincarnated right here. We're watching it in front of us. One final shot for Pickett. And that is incomplete. Two seconds left on the clock. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. One final shot. They'll look to throw. And that will be incomplete as time has run out on this football game. And as this defense walks off the field, they can do so with their heads held high. What a performance well, by, by the offense, too. I mean, really, Charles, just complete domination on both sides of the football here in this one. Certainly was, and I think both sides compete against each other all the time. You go to each other in practice, obviously your training camps, your offseason. But on game day, you both want to show your best. And I think that's what we saw for both the offense and the defense, a complete team victory. For Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew, I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Ravens are victorious here as we say so long from Baltimore.